Nossa entrevista é com o economista americano Paul Zak, que tem pós-doutorado em Neurociência pela Universidade de Harvard e é diretor do Centro de Estudos em Neuroeconomia da Universidade de Claremont, na Califórnia. Dr. Zak, for the past 20 years, you have run experiments with blood samples and EEG exams. What does it have to do with economics? Neuroeconomics allows us to understand how people make decisions so that we can help them make better decisions. And since people can't tell us why they do what they do, we need to measure brain activity to really understand what they're doing and why. You say that the hormone oxytocin is the moral molecule in your first book. Uh, how did you come to this conclusion? So we spent 10 years developing a way to measure the brain's production of oxytocin and showed that when the brain produces this during social interactions, we become more empathic, we become more willing to help other people in tangible ways like giving them money if they're in need. And so oxytocin appears to modulate appropriate social behaviors. So we call those moral behaviors, the good behaviors that we see in everyday life. And before this work, there wasn't a good sense in biology and psychology and economics on why we see so much good behavior in the world. Even though the bad behavior makes the news, it's the good behavior that keeps everything moving forward in society. Yeah, you say that the oxytocin is also important to establish trust between people. And why did you test it at companies like the online retailers uh, Zappos.com and the furniture company Herman Miller? And how were the, those experiments? Can you explain a little bit for us, please? So we spent a lot of time in companies like the ones you mentioned, taking blood samples from employees, measuring brain activity in multiple ways, and giving them tasks to do that reflect what they really do at work to understand how the culture of a company, which is essentially the rules of behavior that people adopt, can influence brain activity, behavior, and the stress of work. So what we found is that when you have a great company culture, like at Zappos or Herman Miller, we have more effective teamwork, faster innovation, people enjoy the process of working with each other more, and they even shed the stress of work more rapidly once the workday is done. So these are findings that you can only really measure using brain activity because it tells us precisely what's going on. So any human endeavor has a reflection in the brain but we don't really know what that reflection is unless we measure it. So by studying these companies and others like them, we get a sense of how to create an organizational culture that is great for individuals, increases performance for companies, and actually makes people happier outside of work as well. And you also tested uh, oxytocin levels at uh, uh, 50 largest companies in the world. Did they agree to let you take blood samples at the employees? No, for those companies we didn't measure blood samples. We used the laboratory studies and the, and the field studies in, in uh, businesses to create a survey that captures these building blocks of organizational trust and then relate those trust levels on self-report to performance measures like retention, productivity, energy at work, number of sick days. So by having all this evidence, we have a reflection of what's going on within company cultures and we found that culture is a, is a massive lever for performance. When culture's terrible, you're just beat down. It's not a great place to be. And when you love what you do, you have a trusted team, then you have a lot of discretionary effort and performance source. And what would be the first steps for a company that wish to change the culture? Right, so one thing is to just know where you're at to measure that. So if you don't want to create a survey to measure trust, you can simply measure how much on a typical day people enjoy their jobs. So the neuroscience predicts and our data show that when trust and the sense of purpose, I know why I'm here, I know why our organization exists, is high, people enjoy their jobs. So you can reverse engineer that process. Find out how much people enjoy their jobs. If they're on a six or seven out of seven, you're doing great. If it's a two or three, not so good, and then begin to ask, just interview, why, why is it, you know, what beats you down at your job? Is it your leader? Is it the kind of job you're doing? Do you have a lack of growth? And so we've been able to quantify these factors that 
give people a sense of accomplishment. So an implication from the science is not that people should be happy at work, but after doing work with a trusted team that's important to the world, they should have a sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. So that's really where the value in this comes from is the science tells us the direction of causation. I don't want parties and free taco Tuesdays. What I want to do is give you a trusted team doing something important, then I'm motivated. What are the financial evidences that make trust so important in companies? Great question. So we uh, marshaled so much data to look at measuring trust within organizations to see how much trust increases growth. I think there's two really telling statistics. One is that individuals who work in high trust organizations make substantially more money than those who work in low trust organizations controlling for the type of industry, your education levels. The only way in a competitive world I can pay you more as an employee is if you're more productive. So that's the first piece of evidence. The second is that we find that companies that move from one quartile of trust to the next quartile using U.S. data increase revenue produced by each uh, employee by about $10,000 more a year. So if you have 5,000 employees, increasing trust will add $5 million to your bottom line. The return on investment to creating an environment where people can really flourish is extraordinarily high. Great. Thank you very much for the interview. Certainly.